Yes. Okay. We're going to start the stream. <coughs> stream starting. Stream should be star. Ted? It started. Okay. We come over here, do a transition, come over here to another transition. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't tell us to start our audacity. Yeah. <laughs> that was a test. Uh, go ahead and load up your audacity and hit record in three, two, one. Record. Test, 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 test. Mark Check passed it. the test. Mark passed the test. Okay. Transition. Let me hit stop recording because I'm a particular fella. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Android App Addicts. This is the show where we talk about Android apps, Android phones, Android logos, and and Philip K. Dick novels. Maybe not. Hey, my name is Mark, sometimes known as the Sultan of the Soapbox, and joining me this week are the people you're really here to hear, uh, the door-to-door -door geek, Mr. Steve McLaughlin, and Eric, the late one, Ardini. Hey, gentlemen. Wow, I'm dead. I don't know. Uh, I'm not late. I was here early. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't tardy. It was just my computer was flipping out. I'm. I'm broadcast. I'm podcasting to you now in recovery mode. Uh, my hard drive's on the edge. So, if you're listening to this as a downloadable audio podcast and the audio doesn't sound quite right, it's because I had to use the YouTube audio and Eric's local recording go boom. But since I'm not a fortune teller, uh, we don't know how it's going to turn out. Yeah. yeah, the good news is Eric is a, a sensible Linux user and he had a home on a separate partition so he could just blow away his program partition and reinstall and everything would be hunky dory. So take the moral of the story is build your partitions right from the beginning. Definitely helped. Did I do that right? <laughs> just nod. I'm, I'm just okay. assuming. Just okay. <laughs> because I don't feel like my partitions are correct, but I, I'm not. Did help you set it up? Now. Uh, I think I came to door after I got to a point. Oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, I need door. All right. Well, so, oh, I forgot to mention this is episode 472. I left that out. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, 473. 473? You put in the notes, 472. What notes? I don't have any notes. Chat. Oh, then I did that wrong, I'm pretty sure. It's for, It's somewhere between 400 and 500. We kind of lose track. That's what I'm going to say. Speaking so, of 500, uh, Mark Seralt has already came out with the uh, 500th episode exclusive Android App Addicts watch face. Well, we've got like nine months before we get there, but yeah. I know. It seems like it. it's like, well, he's he was never that early on the other ones. So um, I know I, I got to get I need to get a new watch band for my watch so I can start wearing it again. So I was here for for two hundred. Is there? I haven't been here that long. What was the big? You had a big number just before I got here. Was it four hundred? Maybe. I'm gonna say you were here. If it if it wasn't four hundred, it was just after four hundred. Four twenty. <laughs> I guess, and that's when we started with Mark. No man, I wouldn't remember that. Twenty. <laughs> so anyway, seems since, right, man. Since we're getting a late start, and um, and we're not sure how long Eric's computer is going to last. We're going to get skip straight to the good stuff. And I'm going to say, Eric, empty the tank. Oh man, I'm not ready for this. As, oh. as you know, my computer was just booting. So I don't have a, a, a real good uh, sense of all of my open um, window um, browser windows or tabs yet. All right. So door, go, go with half a tank and then we'll come back to Eric. Thank you. Okay, I just set the nice up on OBS. Hopefully it comes out clean. Um, the first app I'm going to bring, I'm a little confused by. I think their timing is horrible, but they did it. Um, marketing at Google, which I was kindly educated on Google Plus, is in fact Google. Because I looked at it, I said, that's not Google. That's some con 
Ponzi scheme thing called marketing at Google. Well, I'm wrong. It is Google itself. They put out an Android Samba client. That's the name of the app. Android Samba client by marketing at Google marked productivity, 66 reviews, uh, 3.3 average reviews updated July 5th installs between five and 10 hmm. current version 1.0. I don't understand this for a couple of reasons. One, it's five years too late. Everybody who's on Android already has a solution in place. Uh, whether it's FX, File Explorer, or, or another application that's able to do this. So I don't understand why they're coming out with this now, number one, because of timing. Two, I don't understand why it's coming out because of timing. Because we just had WannaCry and all its variants cover the news like a wet blanket. And the main vulnerability in that was Samba. And to actually call it Android Samba client just double confuses me. But this is basically a mini app that will allow you to connect to remote Samba clients on your local network. Yo, uh, it's, a, it's a Samba server too, right? Isn't that allows you to mount an SMB file share in their downloads file? So... Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's just a client. I thought it was a server. Um, it wouldn't shock me if it had that functionality, but I did not see it when I launched it. I will say that. All right, so you you can explore from your Windows, from your Android phone to your Windows network. So in Too other many. words, what every file explorer, third-party file explorer already has been doing. And has been doing for years. Um, the only thing I can think is this is a test functionality that they're going to eventually put into their native file explorer is the only thing I can think of, um, we, which I would say is a good thing. Um, I do feel like there eventually probably will be a day in time where we don't need third party file explorers for most normal users or for most task. Um, but I don't see that being anytime soon. So if you want to keep your stuff very clean, very thin, you don't need access to OneDrive or FTP type access to a server. All you need is to browse your local shares on your local network. And you want to stay Google centric. Well, then this might be the app for you. If, okay, fine. It's a thing, but you know, solid explorer and, and, ES file explorer and all those things can do that plus so much more. So if you're going to install a secondary app just to, inst to browse Samba, it seems a little silly, but Hey, it's a, it's a thing. So there you go. I agree. I agree. Um, next app is going to come with a prerequisite when that is, um, Mark, we, we already have a, as far as I'm concerned, official Android app addicts podcast playing app. You want to fill the new listeners in for us? Yeah. So this is a, a, an app that began through much ranting of myself. It's called Castback, uh, and that name means uh, uh, podcast and feedback. It allows you to leave feedback in line with a podcast, um, and it's time synced so that somebody else listening to that same podcast gets a notification that you have made a comment and can read that comment while they're listening to the show or jump to the part in the show where that comment was made. Um, it, 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 that's just the, the killer feature. It's also got every other great feature of every other um, uh, browser or a podcast client out there. I think it's amazing. And I'm really disappointed that so, so few people are using it. So um, if you haven't checked it out in a while, it was it was in an extended beta period, but it's uh, it's solid now. It's they even have a, um, a paid version if you want to kick the uh, the uh, developer a little uh, cash in there, but check it out. Cast back. Yeah. And every overnight success requires years of hard work. So, so hopefully uh, the day will come for that app. Here's an app that came into the uh, Google plus feed though. It's called a cast box, free podcast and audio. First off, when is it not? Number one, number two, when it is not free, we call that a failure because there's no such thing as a successful paid podcast out there. They don't exist. Um, this is by castbox.fm dash radio and podcast and music and audiobook 
and news and magazines. Okay. Horrible grammar in the name alone. Okay. Uh, 1,200 reviews, 4.5 average reviews updated July 6th between 100,000 and 500,000 installs version 1.7.3. Um, I just uh, became aware of this this morning. Haven't had a lot of time to look it out, but I will say initially I nearly despise their onboarding process. First thing they want to do is they want to link to your Facebook account. <laughs> uh, that, that to me is very poor taste for a podcast application. Their second thing of poor taste is as soon as you either skip that or log in, it wants you to pick topics that you like. So I scrolled down, I picked technology or science and technology. And then it said, you must pick two more. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I hate the other categories. They suck. They're putrid. They're bad. So I hit skip again. And then I went through their main interface and everything in their main interface might as well have been network TV type podcasts, as far as I'm concerned, which I truly rank as some of the worst content I've ever listened to. Um, I don't want to listen to Hollywood actors. I don't want to listen to people who really don't care about the content and they have a team of people that don't understand how to create a podcast, doing a podcast, people that don't know how to host a website, doing a podcast. People don't understand anything about audio stuff doing a podcast. I don't like those people doing podcasts because they don't care about any of the product. They just do it hoping for a buck. And that's 90% of the content that was pushed towards me in that first screen. Now, with that out of the way, this was a really nice looking application. I got to say, really pleasing to the eye, very easy to navigate, very easy to search and find around. When I went in and I searched for Podnuts, I saw all my normal type shows with some obligatory like bookmark number to them, like how many people are listening to them, which I find, to be quite frank, very insulting because there's no way on, in this universal plane we live in, they're accurate. They're not. They're just their personal guess, I think, uh, for content. Um but for some reason, it's caught on. You heard my download numbers. You heard my install numbers for this app. So there's something about it that a lot of people like. Me know me ain't normal. Me so far really don't like this app. This this has never happened to me before. Um, this is an app I don't remember. Yet uh, it shows my review when I left a review of this app. Um, when I go to this page and then my review gave it one star and it says way more ads and less features than all other podcast apps. So whatever was on my crawl that night or day when I was using it, I was not impressed, I guess, but well, they did offer, they did offer a beta version for me to try out afterwards with okay. an orange, with an orange icon. I, I guess I, there's a, I'm sorry. I'm guessing there's a uh, an iPhone version of this because this says it has less than 500,000 installs, but their their uh, copy here says over five million users. Oh, well, then they either must or again they can't count. I apparently did bring this back on episode 459, and apparently something did change. I can tell you when I loaded this last time, I do not remember it looking like this at all whatsoever. Even clothes, nothing like this. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember it at all either. It's just, I don't know. I, and I don't typically leave um, reviews for things, especially a bad review, too often. It must have been something that really must have been, must have been the ads. Maybe I don't know. So listen to these features: subscribe to over one million podcast channels, including whatever, whatever. Stream or download 50 million plus episodes. Search or listen to your favorite podcast. Discover new and trending podcasts. Listen to podcasts in your native language or trying a new language. Uh, keep track of your subscriptions with God's singing. So in other words, it's a podcast app. Yeah. The only thing I see that this might do different is the language thing. Now, what I didn't see is their language filter because on a lot of other podcast apps, if I search for Linux, for instance, if I don't look at it carefully, the whole podcast will be in Spanish or French or another language. So if this can actually say only show me English podcast back, well, I'd say that's a plus. It's a small plus, but it's a plus, but I don't, I honestly don't think it does that. 
I think what they're saying is the opposite. We have all languages. Right. <laughs> exactly. There's stuff out there in other languages. Yeah, it says 50 million episodes. Well, door between you and me, we could put a pretty good chunk in that number. <laughs> yeah. It does have a sleep timer, though. Yeah, and um, there is no in-app purchases. It is, there is no ads. If you scroll down farther, it says benefits for podcasters. No hosting fees, 100% free, which means, yes, either they're inserting ads into the audio, which they, it isn't hard to do that, or there is some kind of ads that they don't register with Google. Well, number 10 in the list of features is ads free version purchase available spending only $1.99. You can get your ad free version of Podcast Player. Yeah, I don't see it even saying in app purchases. Mine says in app products four ninety nine per item, even though the ad free part above says one ninety nine. This is there, there's nothing right about this. And it's all so, hype. It's meaningless is, marketing. As extremely why I probably left it one star. I'm getting mad not even trying the app again. Huh. Well, this it, is marketing double speak. Yeah. This. This is, yeah, that's bad. Well, Mark, let me then bring something that will energize your synergy and bring you to a new pivot point that is brand new onto the market scene. Um, Bingo. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I like the idea of programming a lot. And um, I do believe everybody who goes through today's schools should learn at least some basic programming. But one of the biggest arguments is, well, then what kind of programming? Um, I looked at this app called Grasshopper by Area 21 Education, 16 reviews, 4.1 average reviews, uh, June 20th updated between 1,000 and 5,000 installs, version 1.0.2. And when I went through some of the basic things, I honestly could not pick up, because I'm not, you know, an expert, what programming language this was. It seemed like it taught more basics and fundamentals about programming versus to a specific programming language. Um, yeah, this is pseudocode. Yeah. I, I thought that, but I honestly didn't want to say it out loud because, you know, didn't want to be dumb. Um, Cause I wasn't sure. And I liked the idea of this. So I immediately sat my kid in front of it and my kid is now habitually addicted to my 3d printer. So I told him now every day, I want you to go through this for at least a couple minutes before you're able to print anything on the printer. Um, and he has, and he says he's learned a little bit, you know, on how to do stuff. So it's a start is my logic. Hmm. So is it similar to basic? Uh, I would say it's probably a hybrid between C sharp, Python and basic somewhere in between. Cause it's a very, non-advanced code that I'm seeing. Hmm. Yeah. Th this is just to show you the basic fundamentals and just, I mean, they don't give you much information at all, but it looks like they're at least following good basic principles, like, you know, camel humping your variables and things like that. Right. Um, uh, so, I mean, it, yeah, it seems like a fine thing, but don't expect to actually learn to code from this. Right. It's kind of dip your toes in a little bit if you're, if you're curious. Right. It's, it's teaching you logic uh, or teaching you to employ logic using a code. Cool. Very cool. Are you ready, Eric? I got a couple. Sure. I will start them out with um, a very untimely app that uh, I should have brought last week, but I'm going to bring it so I can uninstall it off my phone. You may, I mean, I, I feel that this is still being in use if I, when I listen to the newscast today, actually. Um, Iowa, so let me give you a little uh, geography lesson in government. So the new, uh, the new governor of Iowa, or the old governor of Iowa, is the new ambassador to China. It's kind of weird, you know, how that happened. And also at the same time, all fireworks became legalized in Iowa this this uh june right before that happened 
I'm not saying that there was any collusion or anything there that would make those two things have anything to do with one another, but it just seems like that's where a lot of fireworks may come from. And he is now their ambassador and they were very strict on their uh, laws for fireworks prior to that. And now the cities, after having a horrendous 4th of July with all these rookies playing with big, big fireworks, um, all the cities are going in and making their own ordinances, rebanning all of that crap. So um, this app I'm bringing is called Nalem, and uh, it's basically a way to, uh, it, it's only in New York, I believe, currently, but it's a way to narc on your neighbors um, using your using your mobile device to um, tell them that you there's illegal fireworks being used or sold near you, and you can take pictures and uh, and easily report to the authorities. So maybe well, keep that in your pocket for next year. <laughs> well, I, I'll first say there's no way Iowa could even add a uh, 0.1% of income to the firework sales um, with companies like Disney being the number one producer, no, uh, the number one buyer of explosive ordnance. period. Uh, the only one greater is the U S military who, <laughs> Definitely buys that. So the dent is going to be minimal. In the screenshot, it, it's showing California. Oh, maybe it's California. Um, as at least um, uh, the place. One Capital Mall, Sacramento, California, 95814. I personally, over the last couple of years, have completely flip-flopped on um, fireworks, uh, residentials, individuals with fireworks and it's only because i've now because of the podcast and all the amount of people who i communicate with which before uh, i was very happy to be in my house by myself all day uh hmm. i really despise the idea of adding any trauma to any veterans of any shape or form i personally believe it should be a legal period in every state to shoot fireworks off out front of your house period because you never know when your neighbor has been through a war, is a veteran who's done everything they can to help this country, to defend this country, to defend innocent people, to help innocent people, whatever. And then you're causing their PSD, let's say, to itch. You know, it, it isn't cool. It isn't kosher. It isn't right. It isn't proper. It's not ethical. It's not moral. You should be able to take your fireworks if you want to use them to pre-designated areas to shoot them off, in my personal opinion. Um, if you don't agree with me, I don't care. Go away. Listen to another podcast. Because without veterans, without volunteers volunteering to do the task that they're doing, we as a country don't have much, is my logic. R R rant done. Sorry. Can I, can I tell you a crazy fireworks story? It, it yeah. is our show after Independence Day. Back in college. One of my many jobs um, was uh, running sound for local bands. I had some sound gear, and uh, I would set up the gear and and uh, run the sound and stuff. And uh, I was in this little town called Lone Oak, Texas, uh, probably a thousand residents. Um, and the volunteer fire department, uh, Bubba and Jim Bob and Joe Buck, uh, managed to get a hold of some of the the big fancy fireworks and uh, for the town's um, celebration out at the, 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 the town square, there was a pavilion and, uh, there was a, a band there. That's the reason I was there. There were actually all day bands. And at the end of the night, it was the fireworks display. And then after the fireworks, the band was going to play some more. So I was there, you know, doing the sound thing. And, uh, typically when you're setting off these professional grade fireworks, you're a mile from civilization. Well, Billy, Bob, and Joe Buck, and, and Jim Frank, and whatever, were like, I don't know, 75 feet away from the audience um, and launching these. And first thing, you know, it's like next drain because they're going 1,000 feet up in the air, um, and you, you, you're you looking straight up. Secondly, what most people don't realize is how much flaming debris falls straight back down um, when you launch those things. So it's just it's like fire and brimstone. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah stuff falling from the sky. I'm running around trying to cover my gear so it doesn't catch on fire. The rednecks on the other hand are, you know, just pouring their beer on the flaming embers on the ground and, uh, and just going on with the show. 
about halfway through, one of the giant rockets falls over before it's launched. Hmm. Launches out into the audience, lands in a lady's lawn chair. It's one of those old style, you know, weaved canvas and, and aluminum lawn chairs. She dives out of the chair just before it explodes. It sets the chair on fire. A couple of guys around her grab their coolers and stuff and dump ice on it to put the water out. She gets up, sits back down in the chair and goes on with the show, people. Uh, And this is the most redneck experience of my, I've never been more terrified. (laughs) The local volunteer fire department setting off professional grade fireworks. Job security. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, now we understand why the residents of Pompeii just sat there. <laughs> they were all drunk rednecks. Yeah. So anyway, that's my fireworks story. Nice. That's a good one. Got another app, Eric? I do. This one comes from my friend, or he said that it's like a, uh, it's like a, uh, an Eric app. And he was pretty much right. So this one is called Rodeo Star. Um, rodeo stampede sky zoo safari and basically you're it's a sort of an endless runner where you have to lasso and then jump onto um, other animals as you're going down the path once one gets tired you have to bail and get on a different am, uh, animal and uh, there's different things you can find along the way and stuff but it's mostly you're going for the distance and it's like quasi 8-bit minecraft style graphics yeah yeah it is yep it, it, it's a fun game really it's, it's tough though it's kind of hard it's uh more difficult than i'm i'm used to as far as these kind of games go and there's a little, a little bit more to it so i didn't get super far in it that's what i'm saying <laughs> well it, i'll say this it didn't look easy but i did like the style of it uh if you stay on an animal too long they kind of go flippo crazy so you have to keep jumping up in the air, swinging your lasso, connecting with another animal and, and r- riding it. And there's all kinds of animals. And you, your goal is each time you lasso an animal, it ends up in your zoo, very Western culture. Like, um, and like one of the animals you can get that is really good is a, is a, um, elephant that just runs through everything, rocks, trees, other animals, all kinds of stuff. And the gameplay was nice. I, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head how it went, but I, I remember saying this is a little different gameplay and I like the controls of it. Um, the way they had that set up was very well done. Well, there was one I just saw where he, where the animal actually throws you onto the next animal. I'm not sure what that was. I didn't get that far. 10 million to 50 million installs. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. All right. What you got next? Uh, my next one's a, another hard game. It, too, it was too involved and too much for me to hang hang with. Um, although the idea was neat, it's called Armpit Hero VIP. Uh, with a name like that, I knew I had to be in. And basically, there's a there's a boy who flies with his armpit hair. Um, <laughs> it was all anime. Um, like, and then the, the his girlfriend. I can't remember what dysfunction she had. She was really messed up too. And somehow I don't remember what it was. It wasn't armpit hair, but it was something else weird. There's a whole story that goes along with it, but it was just too much of a, too much of a involved game that I couldn't, I couldn't get into it too much. Um, But it it was well drawn, I guess I would say. Um, It's a pretty game. uh, Side scroller. Game features. Number one, infinite killing action. There you go. Yeah. If you're into that, that's good. Yeah. And to me, it looks almost like a bullet hell kind of game where there's stuff like easily overloading your senses. Like there's so much stuff on the screen at one time. Yeah. And it, it was, you know, it was guiding me through at the beginning. And I, I don't even know if I got all the way through the guidance of it. It was just, I just felt like, oh, there's no way I can comprehend all of this. But after I played for a little while, my, my girlfriend like joined me to help along with the, the quest, I guess. So what did your wife say? Well, this is, this is my, my Android app world. So I didn't, I didn't let her know yet. Is there a point where I'm supposed to? I don't know. 
Uh, but there is a free version. This one is 99 cents. We will have the link in the show to the free version if you just want to check it out. Oh, I paid for this one. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I better go back and get my money's worth then, huh? Maybe, yeah, sure. All right, I'll start playing it again. That's all. Um, I think that's all I've got right now. All right. For my Dork, the other half of your take. Okay, um, since Eric brought a kind of crazy looking game, I'm going to bring another crazy looking game that is not kid friendly. It's not in any shape, where form kid friendly. Uh, it's called Skull Girls. I believe Skull Girls uh, was a racing game on PC, Mac, and Linux. So I saw Skull Girls. I thought, awesome. Let me check it out. Either I have the name wrong or this is the same name, but completely different game. That, that, this is by Line Corporation, 2,700 re, re, um, views, T14. In my humble opinion, this is at least 15 or up, I would say. Uh, 3.9 average reviews, uh, updated June 9th between 100,000, 500,000 installs. Uh, current version 1.2.2. Content rating. Teen violence, blood, sug, sug, suggestive themes, partial nudity, and language. <laughs> now I think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, and there is a video for it in the store. And the video to me reminds me a lot of what the art style that Eric just had on his armpit game. Uh, except in traditional Western male created games, they completely utilize the physics engines on female bodies and that's as far as i'm taking that um <laughs> it's almost like a street fighter-esque fighter game but it's more of a tap swipe double tap um making like shapes almost to, to do your fighting techniques um the actual fighting i'm going to say was pretty good a hell of a lot of words though a hell of a lot of words in this game where like we'll constantly for the first couple minutes stop every couple of seconds and tell you, well, if you do this, it will do that. If you do this, it will do that. And then, you know, after each round, you can get like health upgrades, attack upgrades, all their kind of stuff. So it's packed tight with words. Um, but I will say it was genuine fun, even though not really kid friendly whatsoever. So one of the uh, reviews by DLF the Meme Lord says, to be honest, this is an okay port of a good game. In general, the game has some of the best visuals I've ever seen in a 2D fighter. However, the mobile version isn't as good as the second Encore, despite the fact that it retains its gorgeous and stunning visuals. But as I said, it's an okay port. So you, you, it is a game, but maybe not the game you thought it was. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of looks like, is it, does it play like Street Fighter? Yes and no. Street Fighter was much more complicated uh, control scheme, much more buttons, and there was no upgrade paths. Mm. It's a side fighter, and that's where the similarities almost end with Street Fighter. Um, this is almost like some of those Neo Geo games that we saw with fighting, where they were more, I don't want to say artsy like, but half swipe circle to do techniques instead of Street Fighter, you know, button mashing and very precise combinations. Uh, what I got next, I honestly believe also came in Google plus cannot remember who it was. And I almost despise these things. I'm going to say, uh, but this honestly had me at least a little bit interesting. Um, top 10 list of anything by Trang Ho, uh, lifestyle T for teen, 187 reviews, average 4.3, Updated May 1st, installs 1,000, 5,000, current version 1.7. To me, this is an interesting app, but I hate, again, the onboarding process. First thing it wants you to do is to either sign up, sign in, continue with Facebook, or sign in with Google, or me, top right, click skip, because I don't want any of this anywhere. Um, it tells you, um, like, top 10 facts about, like, the Super Bowl or top 10 things about the Ming dynasty that you didn't know. Um, I'm not completely sure all of it is factual is what I'm going to say, but some of it I did read was at least, you know, 
interesting is what I'm going to say. Um, none of them are short. Each one of the things that they list does come with a full like paragraph long description of what it's talking about. It isn't just, Hey, you know, this is red. It will actually go into tell you why it's red when it's red and, you know, and how that impacts it kind of thing. That's good discovery to expand your mind a little bit, I guess. Well, and, and if you're the kind of person that likes going into meetings and just being able to make weird stuff to catch people's attention off guard. Did you know that, you know, and then, you know, just to make them make sure that they're listening is what I'm going to say. Um, um, this next one I'm going to bring, I did not get a chance to look at, but it was one of those things that just looked gorgeous enough for me to at least check out. And unfortunately there is a video for it in the store. Um, it's called lineage Two revolution by net marble games 119,000 reviews does have in-app ads does have in-app purchases 4.3 average reviews uh up, updated june 14th between 1 million and 5 million installs current version 0.15.81 uh teen, teen blood violence um if this, I would say this is just normal teen um, kind of stuff. I only got a chance to load it up and just play it for literally a couple seconds. And what I got to say is a gore, a gis. This is the kind of game I'm really shocked they can pull off on a handheld uh, computer. Is the gameplay anything like the video? Uh, these are all the cut schemes, the cut scenes. Uh, I don't believe you actually... Okay. I, mean, I thought it, near the end you actually saw gameplay. This game is incompatible with all your devices. So there's that. I don't know what you have oh, to yeah. add. But... Same here. What'd you install it on? Uh now it says it with mine. I installed it on my Honor 8. Maybe I sideloaded it. Huh. It, the cutscenes look awesome. I've never, yeah. I've, I've, it's photorealistic. I mean, I wouldn't even, until you see the people's faces, you think it, it is just you watching a movie. Yeah, very impressive game, but I won't be able to play. Thanks, Dor. <laughs> well, I'll say with, with, with all of these kind of things, what I highly encourage you to do, uh, Keep it in your queue, put it in your wish list. And then if you want to go back and check it out in a little bit and see um, if it loads. What I'll say is the game looks good. It doesn't look that good, but the game definitely looks good. If you go to just YouTube and just search for Lineage 2 Revolution Android, you'll see it being played. All right, what's next? Uh, next I'm going to bring is, uh, predator after my, Oh, I'm going to bring this just because I've had to actually type out some things. Um, I've had off of work since Monday, Monday was my Friday, um, because I got doctor's appointments for the kids and everything. And I actually had to do some typing. Um, and I loaded this called enlightened code editor un unreleased. Uh, on my pine book that I got, I was, a, I, I'm able to boot to my SD card. So I put Android on it, boot up to it, see what it was like, uh, loaded this code editor. And I gotta say, I think it worked really good. Uh, this says it's a unreleased app by zero X fireball. Uh, it's because it's unreleased, no reviews or counted reviews between 5,000, 10,000 installs hasn't been updated since March. Um, it's just a simple minimalist is their words, not mine code editor. Uh, I like the fact there's not crazy toolbars. There's not a whole bunch of stuff in, in my way. I can just type and you can pick uh, syntax highlighting for uh, the code itself. Me, I was already loading up the files with the ex proper extension. So I guess it just picked it up all up magically and knew how to uh, highlight it. So it just worked. Cool. 
what were you typing? Uh, I was trying to mess with a little bit of uh, CSS for a new uh, site so, yeah, I was playing with the idea of. But, cool. you know, I suck at CSS, so every time I saved it, I, ooh, what was that? Oh, yeah, it was a little ugly. So I, you know, stopped doing that. Nice. All right, one more. Give us your best shot. Oh, best? Oh, man, don't pressure me or anything. I'm going to bring this one. Uh, it does 18 for teen. My son is 12. I played it for a little bit. And I thought it was okay, so I let him play it. Um, this is called, I already forgot the name, uh, Last Day on Earth survival game there is some multiplayer aspect to it i didn't check it out and i forgot to ask him if he tried it uh this is by keffer k-e-f-i-r keffer uh, keffer Ex- exclamation uh, point okay uh teen in-app purchases no ads Twenty-one thousand reviews 4.5 average reviews updated june 30th between 1 million and 5 million installs version 1.4.3 so if there is multiplayer you should have more than enough people to multiplayer with uh this is almost like a high def version of minecraft is the way that i pitched it to him there's a lot of crafting a lot of surviving surviving but definitely more combat focused um there are basically this is like the apocalypse kind of thing and you have to defend your turf against other humans. Uh, I do think that there's some kind of uh, other creatures involved, but I don't think I ever saw them. Uh, it does say zombies. I don't think I ever saw zombies. Uh, I had to, to defend my place from other humans trying to come in and loot all my stuff. W- were you online when you did that? I uh, don't think I was. No, I just started okay. up like a single player thing. I don't think the other people were real. I'll say that. Because they were too easy to kill. Oh, I, I just see myself walking into a multiplayer game like this and just getting slaughtered within seconds. Like, oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, hit points. We just we just got more gold. And, and then like having them speaking ill about your mother. Yeah, all that. All that that comes with it. The weird positions and everything. Yeah, he, he definitely had a, a little bit of fun. But I honestly think when he got into the the uh, shooting fights, he was like, I don't, I, I'd rather just craft dad. So I tried. Right. That's good. Hey, so it's kefir, K-E-F-I-R with an exclamation point behind it. Have you guys ever drank kefir? Do you guys, are you kefir drinkers? Never heard of it. Uh, Mark? You, no. Oh, okay. Well, kefir is a fermented milk or dairy drink. Is as, as good as that sounds. Hmm. It, it, it uh it's said that if you drink kefir you can live to be a hundred it's uh it, it it comes it's made by the lifeway corporation from like israel or something it's i i i've drank it quite a few times it's pretty good uh, so you're not very so, kind so you're saying it's big in china i don't i it's big in probably israel i'm thinking well because the reason i, I say that is because china has at last count over a hundred thousand people over the age of one hundred. Well, that's because so they're drinking, your body they're good, drinking oil kombucha. Forever. Yeah, well, kefir is supposed to be really good. It's got probiotics in it, just like like kombucha. That's oh, what the Chinese drink. I'm just going to say right now because I don't care. Probiotics is crap. It's <laughs> complete crap because ninety nine point eight percent of those probiotics, by the time you consume them, are dead. What if you grow it in your basement? then you're probably going to have a really, you you better be really close to the bathroom is what I'm going to say. <laughs> I got to make myself another batch of the booch. Because that's the I got, latest I got some, fat. I got some Essential new bottles. oil and gut culture. Okay. We've been perfectly fine for millennia not trying to manipulate our gut culture. And now all of a sudden, oh, you must do it. You know, we have well, to... You have to get the right balance. You know? Monsanto messed up our gut culture. No, and, and part of the problem is gut culture is probably more unique than DNA. 
Uh, it's more likely I'm going to share 99.99999% DNA with multiple people on the face of the earth and the diversity you can get with the culture in your intestines and your lower intestines is much more of a broad range. So for all you know, that probiotic you're taking is actually causing your gut culture to be completely discombobulated. I believe you. We went to OLF together. We probably share more DNA than gut culture. Can you tell I hate the latest (laughs) woo-woo marketing stuff that I keep hearing? You know, I'm just going to play devil's advocate just a little bit. Kiefer's not bad. Um, While you're on the subject of of gut uh, biomes, uh, we probably come into contact with fewer organic DNA uh, bacteria in our lives today than at ever time in history. Because you can't find a soap that isn't antibacterial. Everything we go, everything in our life is antiseptic. You know, kids, uh, everything is sterile. I, mean, I used to go out and eat dirt, right? And and, and um, that was just the way things are. We uh, humanity spent a lot of their time eating well, dirt and feces. You can say that fast. I'm pretty sure my kid's tablet is dirtier than any bike or skateboard that I handled. <laughs> um, number two, didn't the FDA just outlaw antibacterial soaps? Not that I've heard of. I yeah. don't know. Less than a year ago, they basically said they're all now banned because what they're because they're causing super bacteria to be formed. And you can't go to the store and buy soap that isn't antibacterial. I Not used a- Purell the other day, and I know that's pretty uh, heavy duty. Anyway, I, I don't want to go too far down this road. Um, yeah, <laughs> get the vaccinations, people. Yes, please. <laughs> it's Unless. A- Unless you believe in gut culture, then don't get your vaccine and just stay inside your house. Uh, all right. Now, um, let's wrap this up. Uh, Eric, other than uh, back up early and back up often, do you have any uh, words of wisdom for our audience? <laughs> well, well, don't, uh, don't, owner, don't be too quick to think that your um, s- deeper sonar fish finder is going to come to the right location. I had... Uh-oh. So uh, the follow-up from last week's show is that um, I got this great message yesterday from eBay. It's like, your package is delivered to a town called Crooks, South Dakota. Even though it said my address on there, but then it said, has been delivered, Crooks, South Dakota. And I was like, Crooks, South Dakota. That's just uh, like thrown at my face that they were crooks, isn't it? You know? So I don't know. I, I I don't know what's going on with this thing. I don't know how they do that. They must have gave me some wrong tracking number, I guess. It was a week later than it was supposed to be here, and then it got delivered to a whole different part of the country. I don't know. So I filed the you know the complaint to ask the seller what's up, and now I gotta wait till uh, another six days for them to respond and all this stuff and I mean, it's, it, if, if it ends up coming through, I still save $200, so it's worth it, I guess. But it'll be ice fishing time by the time I get the thing, which I don't, I don't ice fish. Sometimes when you save money, it costs you in time, just saying. But I, it's not like I'm losing anything. You know? I would n- I'm probably not going to buy it had I, you know, if not, but for this cheap way to get it, you know. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not unproductive waiting for it or I'm so not you busy. made a donation to an un- underprivileged family in china i'll get my money back I and mean, paypal and ebay will have my back in the end i'm just rather How much the was product it? i paid 36 bucks uh you gotta look again then son at what i'm pretty sure nothing is guaranteed on ebay until you pay i want to say 50 dollars. no 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 i no, there's a minimum yeah. limit. Yeah, there is a minimum amount they will refund you if it's below a certain amount. They'll just tell you to eat it. It's probably thirty seven dollars. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably thirty five. That was thirty four ninety nine for this thing. I could be wrong, but I'm willing to put money on it right now. I'm not. I might be wrong. I, the number amount though. Well, I'm sure I'll have an update for next next week. But on the, the bright side, side, Eric. But on the bright side, your beard looks magnificent. Yes, yes, it's a month away from being gone. So. We're, uh, we're, hey, you know, I, I traded in my, um, my, my soldering iron for a chainsaw now. I've, once a month, you know, I did, I did use the chainsaw again the other day and I used power tools all, uh, weekend doing some woodwork. Um, 
you know, I, I, yeah, but I, I've got some, I've got computer issues. I need to shave this beard back off so I can get back to, you know, being a hermit in my basement. This is uh, too much manliness for me. All right. I got nothing to follow that. So I'll just simply say, Dor, what, what, what do you have to say to our audience in, 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 a, in a way of goodbye? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be sneaky and I'll put another app in and that app Ooh, is, Dor. is, uh, is uh, Patreon. Uh, if you like this network, if you want to support this network, if you want to support this show, you can go to patreon.com slash Android app addicts, or you can just simply install the Patreon app and search for Android app addicts. And you can find us right there. You can get mobile updates. The split second, I publish the audio show, AKA maybe an hour, hour and a half from now, you can get this in your RSS feed because Patreon now supports RSS feeds. So if you don't want to wait, until uh sunday or monday i think it's sunday night to get the show you can get it hours after we do the show via patreon it only costs you as little as one dollar a month uh and if it's the kind of thing you like to support then that is a very painless way to do it all right and even on an abbreviated night where we started late and kind of rushed through things we brought you 12 solid apps well 12 apps, anyway. Uh, <laughs> beginning with Android Samba Client by Marketing at Google, Cast Back f- uh, Free Podcast and Audio, excuse me, Cast Box Free Podcast and Audio by Castbox.fm, Grasshopper by Area 120, Nalem by AppOrder.com, Rodeo Stampede Sky Zoo Safari by Yodo One Games, Armpit Hero VIP by Candy Soft Inc., Skull Girls by Lion Corporation, Top 10 Lists uh, of Everything by Trang Ho, Lin- Lineage 2 Revolution by Net Marble Games, Enlightened Code Editor, unreleased by Zero X Fireball, Last Day on Earth Survival by Kafir, and Patreon by Patreon. So there you go. For those people who say we don't say the apps enough, just rewind that a couple of times. Um, (laughs) Good night, everybody. Appreciate you letting me hang out with you. And uh, remember to pay for what you like. Bye, everybody. Audacity. Yeah, stop and export that thing right now. Minimize that. I hit the mix and then I marked it. Go back and deamplify it to nothing. I hate when I do that. Boy, do I hate when I do that. Four, seven, eight. What's that noise? That's my computer. What's that? Dude, is that, is that like launch codes or something, man? What are you into? That's that's the sound it makes when the hard drive starts rendering. <laughs> your, your hard drive is working and making that noise? Yeah. I thought I had a hard drive that was going bad. No, it's not Jeez. the drive. It's the ground loop. When I unplugged it, it went away. Um, I just forgot to unplug it. I usually unplug it before the show starts. Well, I didn't hear it all show, so that's fine. Well, that's because I wasn't rendering. Okay, now go down here. I'm going to first not document the apps. I'm thinking I'm going to first start the upload because that takes a while. Come here, come there, come. Up it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come as you are. Sorry, couldn't help. One gig exactly. What's the odds of that? Um, wow how come every time i hit on uh learn about ebay money back guarantee it says uh sorry dude not you (laughs) it says something went wrong we're sorry (laughs) we canceled that like the day after you bought this thing yeah, I just got I, an email during the show that said my PlayStation View is going up by 30% next month just because. Oh, that's some crap. 
for well, the I Comcast. Hate, I hate to say we knew it was going to be successful. Not it's still common. at forty dollars a month. It's not. It's not really a bargain anymore. It's still yeah. cheaper than, you know, what I was paying. But for what I'm getting, it's not a bargain anymore. It's disappointing. I, I hate to say it's starting to like cut in. Uh, that sucks. I I actually thought they were going to do the right thing and be truly competitive with that for a while. I guess that's too difficult. I don't know why, but I actually could not. Document the apps. During the show for some reason. I don't know why. Brain hurt. I don't see no. I don't see any dollar figure other than you have to prove a signature for something over seven hundred fifty dollars. But we will see. I just want. I want the thing. I don't want my money. Let's see. Where's door here? So you're paying thirty dollars for something that retails for two hundred dollars. Yeah, and they're making money off of it, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's the actual item. Don't know. Yeah, you wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise you if it's not the right actual item. If it is the actual item, like in the same shrink wrap and everything, just sold direct instead of through the middleman. I don't. I don't know. I mean, the the company is out of somewhere in Europe, um, but I'm sure they, their manufacturing is in China. Right. It said originally it was coming from America, but it definitely had a Chinese uh, shipping. Um, well, there, well, there's a small town in China called America. <laughs> <laughs> coming to America. Exactly. Singing mood tonight for some reason. I apologize for that. <laughs> well, I told my son the other day because he wanted to 3D print saying coming to America. I said, okay, you 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 want to do this? He said, yeah. I said, okay, stand on one foot. Bark like a dog. <laughs> Bigger dog. Yeah, exactly. He's like, you can't be serious, can you? I said, you want to print? Yes. Then do it. Hey, funny dad. It's for me. Documenting. I came to America. That's the wrong song. I saw a pretty good thing. It was uh, what if Ivan Drago is in Punch Out? It was all animated like it was on the NES. Pretty funny. Because, of course, Rocky lost or um, Little Mac lost and then he had to go train properly. <laughs> running through the snow chasing chickens exactly and while at the same time drago was doing his modern technical training on the machines and stuff i'm gonna have to go watch that movie now good movie honestly i'm not a after rocky one i'm not a huge rocky guy i kind of like that movie a lot so early on before i think we were even married my my then girlfriend and i she subjected me to like a 17 hour Anne of Green Gables marathon. Ooh. And in retaliation, we watched all the Rocky movies, movies one through four at the time um, in one sitting. And hmm. I got to say, like casting for like Adrian and uh, Mickey and everybody's like, how, yeah, how could, how could he have pulled that off? <laughs> he was dead broke when he did it. Absolutely no money. My girlfriend and I jammed and sang Pink Floyd together. I'm like, oh, yep, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, she had a better collection of hair metal bands than I did on her, her cassette tapes. So that that's when I knew I was going to marry that woman. I was going to say, you found somebody special. She heard that. She's laughing at me, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> you you had that one winger one that just meant so much to us. <laughs> I remember the first time you saw Poison and you thought they were all girls. Oh yeah, I swore it. I swore it. I know, but you know they're girls. Look at them. No, they're not. Said, yes, they are. Look at them. And then you're Axel, saying... Axel Rose getting on that bus and Welcome to the Jungle. You think, oh, that chick's hot. <laughs> oh wait, that's the lead singer of this band. Never mind. He just Damn. looks like a chick. He's ugly. And I thought to myself, how much drugs did he do? Wow, he must have done a lot to look like that. Rodeo was your... No, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. All you... right, Dora, I believe you've got my file. So I'm out. Hey. Yep. Thank, thank you, man. My file made it too, so we're good. Cool. We totally crash and burn. And we are still broadcasting, just to let you know. See you guys later. Bye, Bye Mark. I think that was the first app you brought. So now. Can I keep all this running while I do that other pseudo app get? Or pseudo app. Uh, app uh, command. Well, uh, I would say open web.voxer.com log in and get that url i put in there <coughs> oh yeah and, and install that repair boot because it sounds like your grub is not your bootloader is not pointing to the right kernel to boot correctly uh so i gotta get this one Heck. Doctor's appointment tomorrow, Eric. You do? Yeah, me. And, but I don't think he... I hope he takes a blood test. Well, that's what they're checking you for, right? I don't know. I, mean, I always wanted to take a blood test now, every, every damn time. So, the Linux pit stop come repair drug boot loader on Ubuntu link? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you gotta install via the PPA. There's command there. You gotta basically copy paste. Have you ever, now, here's the stupidest question, which I'm sure you're gonna say no to. Did you ever play Dungeons and Dragons when you were younger? You no, know? I watched people do it. There's a website called Roll20. I keep thinking. Be a good backdrop. Hold on a second. I got some. I got a. I got a video playing something. No idea. Look for the speaker icon on the tab. Why are I Okay, go ahead. The ad's over for. I don't even know what it was for. I keep thinking. Uh, Roll20 is a place where a bunch of people can basically Google Hangout and play d and It has built into the interface like the dice system and everything. Uh, it's called Roll20s? Roll20, yeah, because that's like the 20-sided dice. Die. Mm -hmm. And I keep thinking it would be a good setting to do banter and a podcast. But nobody I know says they want to do it i'll do it i don't care well yeah but you gotta have a good dm that's the thing oh to play we're playing this oh yeah playing D, D at the same time oh dude i would not i wouldn't know what i i, I wasn't there i mean i would i watched literally i just i don't think i'd have time to do it yeah that's the thing each session is not short remember how I got Lineage 2 running. I'm confused. How long ago did you get it running? 
Oh, about a two weeks ago. I'd say probably more than two weeks ago now that I stopped thinking about it. It's incompatible with all my devices. I'm guessing I side loaded it. I mean, I, oh. but I, I don't understand. It's not compatible with any devices yet. It has 119,000 reviews. When you said lineage too, I thought you were talking some kind of an operating system. Uh, that's that crappy one that I'll never install. Like, the, wasn't isn't that the new name for? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am. Yeah, I'm like lineage two. I didn't even know there was. But I didn't know they got past one. Yeah, um, not, um, and I'm saying I'm never going to install it because I don't see it even being alive in a year from now. Yeah, it's, it's uh, shaky. Well, why? Google's incorporated so many of the features back from a lot of the good apps. Okay. And I'm, I'm repairing my boots. So we'll see if I, I, I might lose you. I don't want to be rude. No, you're not. It isn't going to, do, it isn't going to actually make a difference until you try to reboot. Okay. So are we still live? Yeah, do you want me to kill it? No, nah, it's no big deal. I'm I do have one question. Yeah. We're not live, but no biggie. Here. I document the apps, and if I ever stop in the middle of documenting the app, I always screw up when I start back up. No worries, man. No worries. Well, it did it, so we'll have to see what happens when I reboot. Okay. Yeah, Tracy, you uh comment in on that Moto E thread Chuck posted. The yeah, Moto yeah, the cheap one. Yeah, and then it's got even cheaper when it's uh, subsidized by Amazon. Exactly. Um, Tracy uh, was looking for a cheap Verizon phone. Uh, he said, you know, here are the ones he's finding on. So it's like Swap. It was Note 3, Note 4, 6 Edge. I said, honest, I think I'd look at this, Tracy. I showed him, he was like, wow, it's a great price. But then when he was looking at that, he saw the new Nokia phone. Uh, yeah, that's supposed to be ridiculously cheap too, isn't it? Yeah, and it's coming out, it was 50 bucks more, and it's coming out in a week, or like just, uh, just over, just under a week, something like that. Okay, so now, it's Android. Uh, it's Android O, I believe. Hmm. Nice. Like, now that I've said that out loud, I'm not thinking it is. But it's newer. I'll say that. Um, let me do this real quick. I'm going to kill the stream.